everybody and welcome to the 31st episode of Caught in the Wool podcast. Caught in the Wool podcast is a podcast put out by Bumblebee Acres Farm. Um, I am Sam B, your host, and um, this podcast is all about crafting, living on a fiber farm, um, running a fiber business, and all that other fun stuff. Um, For those of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. Um, And for you guys who are new here, oh my gosh, there is a beautiful bright red cardinal chirping at me right now. (laughs) So if you hear him, that's him. I'm trying to film right now. (laughs) Anyways, for those of you guys who are new here, Thank you so much for checking us out. And if you haven't already, please thumbs up the video and subscribe. And that would be awesome. Um, But okay, let's get into it. I can't believe this cardinal. (laughs) This is already like my second take for starting this video. So I mean, he's just gonna be in it. Um, Yes, yes, I know. Okay, so fun stuff, things that have happened in the past two weeks. Um, We got our fencing put up. Um, I will show you guys a little bit of a video of that. Um, Also, Queen Bee and Bro Bee are putting up um, a little bit more fencing, internal fencing, because we just had the perimeter fence around our farm put up. Um, So they are dividing the pastures, not all of them, just some of it. So that way um, we can let the sheep and the goats out on the field and they don't come into the front yard as well. (laughs) So um, if you hear some like banging, that would be them. Also, um, Sen B and Baby B are cleaning bunny cages, so, and the rabbitry. So if you hear some other banging, that will be them as well. Anyways, it's a fun day on the farm. Um, It's a beautiful day, so that's why we are getting all of this stuff done. Um, Of course, I got out of all of the manual labor stuff because I have, it's podcast day, so (laughs) I feel really bad about it. I'm not gonna lie, but um, it's a beautiful day, so like I gotta film today, and if I wait too, too far to the end of the week, then it might not happen, so... Anyways, um, I don't have a lot of farm stuff to talk about other than that. Um, and I have the pink hair tie on my hand again. For those of you who watched like two episodes ago, you'll know that I hate having my hair tie on my wrist when I film. Like it's just, it's not pretty, but anyway, anyway, let's focus. Um, (laughs) for those of you who are new here, um, I will say I'm a little bit scatterbrained. Um, I've been getting better at it while podcasting and staying on topic, but little things like birds chirping at me, chirping directly at me. He was yelling at me for something. And um, noticing that I didn't take the hair tie off my wrist are things that will distract me. But um, back on topic, not a lot has happened on the farm in the past two weeks other than getting the fencing up. And that was exciting. So we got um, woven wire fencing. I believe it is two by four inch woven wire and a line of electric um, on top. So the two by four um, squares, two inch by four inch, is so that way the goats and sheep can't try to fit their heads through. Um, Four by four, they kind of can, and then they get stuck. Um, They also are less able to climb on it, which will be good. The electric line on top is kind of to prevent predators from climbing over and also the llamas from reaching over and like pushing the fence over. Um, And we sprung for a little bit more of an expensive, uh, we did wood poles every, I think they're like every eight feet. instead of alternating with metal stakes. And that is because it is less likely to be pushed over. But the whole process was really exciting because they had to use this giant equipment and they pound these 
they don't dig the posts in. They don't use like post hole diggers or anything. They like pounded these logs into the ground. And when they were doing it close to the house, it shook the whole house. And I was like, if I ever wanted to know what it would be like to be in Jurassic Park or like the Jurassic Age and those dinosaurs are walking towards you and everything is like shaking, that would be like the closest thing I can imagine because it was like very steady like footsteps. So that was, it was exciting. Um, also a little nerve wracking because we live in an old farmhouse and so all of the walls are plaster in our house. So I was like, how many more cracks in the plaster are we going to get after this? But it didn't seem to cause too many more cracks. So that was good. Um, yeah. So other than that, uh, not much else going on. I'm excited to have the sheep run in the full pasture. Um, I'm excited to get some footage of that and put it on hopefully Instagram and such. And, and yeah. Um, so now that we talked about farm stuff, because I always do this, you guys will know that I always format these videos with talking about farm stuff, talking about life, and then talking about fiber stuff, the business projects, all of that fun stuff. You can see my fun basket of projects here. Ah! So we have socks, a blanket, a cowl. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and also I have a new pattern coming out that I'm excited to talk to you guys about. And other than that, uh, I wanted to talk about life a little bit because I guess farm stuff in my mind is a little bit different than just general life and what have you. I guess, yeah. So, um, nothing really different has been happening. <laughs> so you guys are like, why, why even bring it up? Um, because of COVID, I feel like this is my only real documentation of life during COVID. And I know that it is very bad and very scary for a lot of people. Um, and I just want to acknowledge it because pretending that it's out there, I found is not very mentally good for you and I know it's throwing everybody off in different ways some people are just living their lives as normal um which is exciting for them but I have you know experienced personal loss you know and know people who have lost people very close to them so I feel like pretending that it's not there is like eh, it's not it's not really respectful for what everybody's going through but I do want to still keep it positive because we don't have to focus on it 24-7. But I still want to acknowledge it. And I hope you guys are safe and well where you are. And that you are staying sane. That you are able to follow the protocols that you feel like are necessary for you and your family safety. And that you are just okay wherever you are. Um, we are doing well. If I feel like I should talk about that, we still do not really go out at all. The most extravagant, risky thing that we have done is a week ago we went to Chipotle and we ordered takeout. And then since we, we have heard that there are several studies that say that UV rays disinfect things. So that's the method that we use to disinfect a lot of stuff um like groceries that can be disinfected that way and our food we let everything sit out in the sun for like 30 seconds and like the direct sun and then we we eat we still use hand sanitizer and stuff but um yeah so we have been doing that we're trying to save up our disinfectant wipes because they are like non-existent you can't order those anywhere um for winter and fall when we can't use the sun to disinfect things so we're just making the most of summer in that regard but yeah we went to chipotle and it was delicious and amazing and totally worth it and other than that like we just go to the post office um 
in the grocery store. We don't go in the grocery store. We still order um, our groceries for pickup. So that's zero contacts. For those of you who are new, um, I am a type one diabetic, which means that my blood sugars and stuff go crazy all of the time if you're not familiar with um, diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease so it's not like type 2 diabetes which is more prevalent um, and usually results from aging or improper health and stuff like that. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune. My body just decided to attack its insulin producing cells and here we are. Um, but that puts me at pretty high risk if I get this disease, um, but that's the same for all sicknesses, like even a cold can take me out, so, you know, it's, it's fun stuff. And Queen Bee has, um, asthma, and Sen Bee just has the worst immune system of anyone I have probably ever met in my life, so we've been extra careful. And as much as it's sucks not being able to go out and then seeing people go out and be able to do stuff you know it's we're just waiting for a vaccine at this point um but yeah so other than that uh life in general has been has been good it's really nice having it be summer because we can spend time outside and i'm really starting to worry about um winter because even fall like up until probably november we can still spend like a large majority of our time outside and then december and january and i feel like i feel like february is going to be the most brutal month march it starts getting a little warm enough where we can do stuff outside but i am dreading february because i don't see a vaccine probably getting through trials until spring maybe summer next year so <sighs> If all of the bees don't make it through winter due to, um, like, homicide, <laughs> then, uh, you know, we just went stir crazy. <laughs> um, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but, um, yeah, so we will try to do something. We've been talking about splurging on a snowmobile so that maybe we can do something fun and exciting. Uh, but other than that, like there's not much you can do out here, even in the summer. And then with COVID, like there are a ton of snowmobile trails. So maybe we will, we will just splurge on that just so we have something to do. And I feel like if you add up all of the money we would have been spending on eating out and going shopping on you know just like fun little trivial shopping and like going to the movies or going and doing anything fun i feel like maybe like one snowmobile we can like say that's about even but who knows um i don't really I haven't really been reading lately. Um, I was listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks for a while, and I'm, I want to say I'm like halfway through book four, and while I am very much enjoying them, I just like haven't really been feeling it lately. I don't know what it is, but Christmas time really makes me in the Harry Potter mood. I guess Halloween time does as well, but it's like summer doesn't really. And that's weird because I feel like most of the books came out in summer and I think the movies did too. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I remember the books coming out summertime. So I just, I don't know what it is, but I always feel that vibe like Halloween time and Christmas time, or Harry Potter times. So like right now, um, I have been working on winding advents. Queen Bee and Sun Bee have been doing most of the advent dyeing. Um, they are more than halfway done with dyeing all the yarn. I am like an eighth done with... I'm trying to do the math. Okay, so the Harry Potter advents are half of all the advents that we have. And I have done 
almost half of those. So yeah, what is that? Like a quarter, almost? I'm almost at a quarter? Oh, we will see. Um, but yeah, because I have done all of the Coquette Sock ones, almost. I think I have like three or four more colors that I have to do, which is like 20 more skeins. Um, because we hand wind those individually, so that way when you are knitting or crocheting with the mini, it's like an actual sample of what the colorway is going to work up with in a full skein. Because if you dye, if you dye um, those pre-made minis, they'll be close, but the color layout is like a little different because of where everything plays out on a shorter skein. Uh, so we like to make them accurate because a lot of times the following year we use those colors um, in our new collection for that year. So that's um, it's kind of like a little sample project thing, though it takes way more time to wind those minis by hand. Like, it is brutal. Um, speaking of minis, we, you might have seen that we did, um, pre-orders for, um, Halloween trick-or-treat mini skein sets. So, they are 13 skeins of 10 gram minis on our squishy sock base, and these are all gonna be new colors, I believe Queen Bee said. Um, there might be a couple that are a little similar to autumn colors that we already have, but... I am very excited about them because we have these cute little trick-or-treat bags that we have so we're gonna put them in there and send them and it's gonna be so cute and we also um, are adding a little something extra to everyone but that's a complete surprise um, but yeah those ones are actually gonna be dyed on those pre-made minis because we didn't have like I would not have had time to wind them all and also I feel like it's going to be fun to do it a little different. Um, and we're not necessarily going to use those colors as regular colors later on. So they're going to be like their own special little one of a kind thing. And I am so ready for fall. We just closed all of our pre-orders for fall yarns. Um, but we will be doing ready to ship fall releases a little bit closer to probably September time. Um, they won't be on all of the bases and in the quantity that pre-orders are, but we figured that that gives pre-orders give people who know they want to do a larger project with those yarns the chance to prepare for that project. And then the ready for ship ones will just be for people who decide like, oh, actually I do need that autumn rainbow color and I wish I had brought some with me because I have some left over from last year um but I didn't bring them out with me I'm also going to be doing a and look I did this weird okay so instead of talking about projects and then talking about releases I'm just telling it now and I switched I guess it's like life and farm life and business life all kind of work together so I don't know guys I don't have like a set format for these videos I know some people like to podcast and they like to be really like regimented and a special way that they do things and stuff and like that's great but that's just not how I am I like to just roll with it so that's what we're doing um but another thing that is exciting is we are going to be um featured in two interweave magazine um issues and i'm not going to say what those are yet but our mini skeins are going to be featured in both of those so that is super exciting um and that means that i'm going to be doing a mini skein update with actually wound minis so I brought some with me and they are packaged because these are ones that we had in our other online shop before I switched us over and I haven't added them to the new online shop yet but I have some left of these so these are all mini coquette sock minis and they are all about 40 yards in each mini and they are a about 10 grams each. Um, Coquette Sock is usually like a little bit more like 11 grams each, but this is our Supernatural set. I hope you guys can see that. 
the lighting is weird out here. It's always weird trying to film in the outdoors because you have super bright sun and then shade and all that stuff. But this is Technicolor Paradise. And then we have Rivendell. and Excursions and Adventures, which is actually a Downton Abbey inspired set. So I'm super excited to add these back in the shop. Um, I don't know if I'm doing them this Friday or next Friday. Uh, we might take a break from doing shop update this Friday, just because um, we need to die pre-orders and we need to get ahead on advents and stuff so we haven't died anything like new and ready to ship yet. Um, and I don't want to put any new pre-orders in the shop just yet, but we have a lot of stuff left over still from um, the past few updates and we still have tonals all in the shop um, as died to order. So I mean, it's not like the shop is empty empty and my foot is falling asleep. <laughs> And so um, the two mini skein sets that are going to be featured in each of those magazines are going to be dyed up and we're going to do um, an extra large batch of those. So yes, I am just super excited because I like we haven't ever really been featured in a magazine before for our yarn. So that's exciting. Um, but let's get into knitting. Uh, speaking of mini skeins, Queen Bee finished this cowl and I showed these yarns back a couple, a few episodes ago, I forget which episode it was, but these were hand spun using yarn or fiber yarn. This was hand spun yarn from our bunnies and our Cormo sheep. So the Cormo was dyed um, in top form into these colors and then I used natural undyed Angora. So you can see that it's got a little bit of like a gray acro cream mixed in there. And I had made up these little mini bats for Queen Bee for her birthday a few years ago and she finally spun them all applied them all and she decided to make a myriad of minis cowl with them and they are a little bit more of like a DK weight and the myriad of minis cowl is made for one of these sets exactly so one of these sets makes that cowl pattern um, and I will link it in the description below but she went up I think two needle sizes I think it's done on a four and she did it on a six and I don't know the exact yardage she ended up having, but instead of doing the color work patterning that is in the cowl pattern, because it kind of like alternates how many rows you do of each color, she decided to do a color block, which I think is brilliant. And since it's DK, I might just write up a pattern for the DK version. And this hasn't been blocked, but look at how nicely it lays, even though it's all stuck in it. It doesn't really curl in on itself too much because it has this lovely I-cord edge. Um, but yeah, it looks super cute. It's gonna be so warm because it is, it is hot. It is hot out still. Um, but I'm gonna try it on. Oh my gosh, look at how cute this is! Oh! And I'm gonna bring this pink to the front because I freaking love pink. Oh my gosh. Oh, I am into this. Oh, this is nice. This was a brilliant idea. Um, the Myriad of Minis original cowl is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit better because, um, well, better for like going out and doing more physical stuff like when you, when it's cold out because the I-cord edge hugs and you probably can't hear me very well because I have this up around my face it hugs your face really well almost like almost like a mask um but for people like Queen Bee who have 
asthma that's triggered by cold weather. It is really good for her because she'll always wear it when she goes out so that way she doesn't have an asthma attack because it keeps her breath all warm and close to her face, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the exact science of it, but it helps. Um, but this, this is super cute. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm really digging this. Okay. That's cute. I'm going to wear this because I love it. And, um, my foot is falling asleep, but I can't stretch it out because I'm on like a decline. <laughs> so if I keep wiggling around, it's because I have pins and needles really bad. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, oh, I am just loving this. Okay, this is super cute. Um, that's gonna have to definitely be a pattern that I fix up. I'll probably write it as a separate pattern so that way if people just want a DK version, they can get it. But if you have the Myriad of Minis original, you can get like a discount because I can do that on Ravelry. So we'll see. I also need to still add all of our patterns to our new online shop because I can sell them there instead now because I can do digital project products instead of just physical products like our old um, e-commerce platform. So I just have a lot to do guys, but Ooh, I am loving this. Ooh, I want this. Like, I don't want to give it back to her. It's so nice. It is just, oh, it is so nice. And like, it's going to be so much nicer too after it's blocked because that, like, you notice how it's a little bit bumpy and ripply because that's just what happens with like knitwear when you are moving it around and keeping it folded up and stuff. But once it gets blocked, it's going to lay so flat and beautifully. Oh my gosh. I love this. I absolutely love this. Okay. Um, and if you were wondering what sweater I am wearing, um, this is like a rayon sweater that I got from, and rayon's like a, I think it's like a viscosy type material. I'm not sure, um, but I got this from Kohl's back when I could go shopping. So um, there is no pattern, no yarn. There's nothing for it. It's just cute and lightweight and perfect for summer. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, but uh, speaking of patterns, okay, so I talked about this two episodes ago. My pumpkin hat. So the pumpkin hat is almost ready to go. So what I am still waiting to do is I am going to film a little tutorial on how to make a little button for the top. So instead of using a pom-pom, you can do a little button, woven button with yarn instead. So I am just waiting on getting the right washer to do that because I'm going to use that as a base for it. But I'm going to include that in the instructions and also probably film a tutorial and photograph a pictorial for it so that way you can do that if you like. Of course, if you want to do a pom-pom, you can do that too. But my vision was that it would just be so cute with like that little, little button on there. But okay. All right. I'm feeling these vibes, these fall vibes. This is like, all right, this is good. It's not too hot here actually in the shade. It's probably like 70, maybe 69 degrees. So mm, I'm not even hot. I'm just happy. Uh, the leaves are actually changing on our maple trees and the one across the street. Um, just like the fringes are just starting to change. So I'm kind of worried that we're going to have like a quick, a early quick fall, and then we won't have the colors for very long. But I'm hoping, really hoping that's not the case because I mean, there's just so little to look forward to lately. Um, but yeah, man, I'm feeling these fall vibes right now. Ooh, okay. So this hat that I talked about in episode 29, I think it was, um, in a little more detail, is going to probably be released um, September 1st, I think I'm aiming for. It's the 19th today. So I think I will be able to get all of that filmed and photographed and all of that stuff. I haven't even done like a 
photo shoot for the hat yet. Um, Queen Bee is making a second one out of our Hagrid's pumpkin patch color. Um, and so we are also going to probably do kits for it as well with the little washer and um, what have you. Just so that way you have the whole set to make one yourself if you want to. Um, but yeah, no, I love this hat. It is so cute. Um, I feel like I need like 10 more or I should knit. Oh, I should design more like in the same style but with different patterning okay sorry i'm getting excited i've really lost my mojo in a for a while so other than knitting this hat and working on this design like a while ago i've been just chugging away at my gryffindor sweater like in all my free time and then i decided to knit a blanket so um this is done out of our sasquatch Erin yarn and you can get all of these yarns right now in the shop if you wanted to i used one skein of each color except for this little corner um i just had a little bit of leftovers from my bubble hearts hat and cowl um this is glow worm this one isn't in the shop right now but it will be soon because I need to put speckles in the shop. This one is Sunshine Yellow, I think, um, or Sunshine Daisies. Yeah, whatever that little spell is that Ron says in the first Harry Potter. Then we have um, Kiwi, Edelweiss. This is one of the new tonally speckles. This is Caribbean Breeze. And then I just striped it what have you so what I did with this was I used oh it's some oh gosh I'm gonna blank on the name I'm gonna put it in the description below but it is a free pattern from Pearl Soho and it's just a corner to corner and it looks almost like it has an I-cord edge but it's not it's just a rolled stockinette edge so you just knit two um on the right side and purl two on the wrong side for every first and last two stitches and it creates just this really nice finished edge um and it is so cozy i have quite a bit left over and with the leftovers and i kind of like played it safe i didn't want to risk not having enough i didn't want to play yarn chicken with it um because what i did with this was i kind of weighed them as i went along and then I decided, well, I'll just copy the same exact row count as I work my way back. So the size of the blocks mirror each other. But this was a fun project. It was good to get something off the needles and like actually get that like finished like mm, gratifica gratification of like finishing an actual pro project so this is a gift for someone we know who is expecting her first baby um i don't know if she watches this podcast um but i watch hers and so i'm not going to tell you who it is the patrons know because i talked about it in a previous video so um yes uh you might I might say something about it once I send it off, but I'm also going to make a little um, pookie, and I've shown those in previous um, episodes as well. They're like these cute little plushies that are round, like almost like little beans. They don't have arms or legs, but they have like different styles. Like you can make a puppy, a kitty, a bunny, I think a mouse and a bear. She has like little slightly different designs for like their faces and whatnot. Um, Baby Bee has made a bunny. I made a bunny and Queen Bee made a bunny. So I think I'm going to make a little bear that matches out of the extras and send it along as well because I feel like that would be cute. Um, but yeah, this yarn is 100% BFL Superwash and it is one of my favorite things of all time. 
this hat, I probably should have mentioned, is done out of our marshmallow worsted. And so the difference between these two yarns, and this is a pretty thick worsted too, um, is this one has a little bit more sheen, I would say, and it's only two plies, so it's very squashy. Whereas this one is kind of plump and a little more sturdy, but they're both like, I love working with them. I love working with yarn that you can feel the wooliness in it. And we're very particular about the bases we carry because we want them to, they have to feel a certain way and they all have to be different enough. So Coquette Sock, one of my favorites because it's very wooly and very different. Um, Sasquatch Erin because I have always loved BFL and I'm finding my hairs knit into this. I'm, I hate when that happens, okay? As a knitter, some people are like, oh, you're knitting your love into the project. No, 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 no. I do not like leaving hairs and things that I'm gifting. I, I just find that like slightly disturbing. So I was trying really hard to make sure I didn't shed while I was knitting this, but I'm gonna have to go through and do like a thorough check and de-hairing before I send it because it's just, it happens inevitably, but I do not like doing that to people. So anyways, it was very fun, very fun project. I will link the pattern below. Um, and that is it with what I have been knitting. Um, Queen Bee, I mentioned, is working on this hat and testing it out of our Haggard's pumpkin patch color. So I wanted to show that so you can kind of see the difference. So this one hasn't been blocked. This hat, um, I actually say you should block it, um, wet block it on a dinner plate. So that way it kind of, it kind of has a little bit of a beret style to it. Um, I didn't want a too slouchy beret though, because I do not like hats that are really big and heavy. So it's kind of, it's kind of beret-ish, but this is just oh, divine, divine, divine. And she, I think, she's a little bit of a tighter knitter, so her length is a little short of seven inches. You do seven inches before you decrease. Um, she's just a little bit short, but I think it's gonna be fine. And, um, oh my gosh. Like, how cute is this gonna look? Like. Oh my god, it's gonna be so cute! And I love the way the color took on this. So do you see how glowy this yarn is? I think it's because it has five plies and the color doesn't always saturate the innermost part of the strand because it's such a tight spin and so many plies. So like that white kind of shines through a little bit. Oh, it is just, and it just looks like it's glowing. Oh, it's beautiful. So we will have kits of it. And this color, even though it's not available as pre-order anymore, it will be available in the shop again and kits for it will be in the shop. So do not panic. Um, but yeah, and this is a fat scroll project bag. It's so cute too. Look at this. Um, yeah, I didn't bring a lot of project bags. I've just been lazy about that sort of thing. Um, another fall project that Senbi is working on. So we had these in the shop as kits. Um, these maple leaf sock sets. And they came with three different colored minis. So you can do a different um, cuff, heel, and toe. And she's using this one for the toe. And I think I'm going to put them as ready to ship in the shop as well um, once we dye them. Once we start dyeing pre-orders, we will dye extras at that time for ready to ship. So if you guys are interested in more of these, let me know. Um, I mentioned in the last podcast that Senbi is working on writing up that um, reinforced bottom of your foot, heel, bottom of your foot, and toe. And that I am hoping she will release probably in September time. She hasn't finished the pair of socks yet and I think she wants to do that first and then we have to test it. 
but um yeah this is one of her sock a day sock patterns so I mentioned this in the last podcast but basically what you do is you hold two strands of coquette sock together and it makes a DK slash worsted weight and so she is doing that and the pattern is and the instructions to do this is all in the sock a day sock pattern which I will link below but um it makes it so squashy and nice oh it is delicious and if you are wondering what these tonals are because they are in the shop right now this is terracotta this is black walnut and the one that I put away that she's using for the toe is copper but yeah oh my gosh beautiful 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 and I guess we have a hedgehog theme going on this little ball holder is by Pete Moss Novelties, but this is from the Leading Men Fiber Shop. Um, they have fiber arts, Leading Men Fiber Arts. Oops, sorry, sorry, Steve, sorry. Um, it's been a while since I saw those guys, but we love those boys. And since we didn't need any more yarn, though Queen Bee had ordered yarn from them too when she ordered these, um, she decided to order us all these cute little, little sock sacks. I have one too. Mine's plaid, but, and I think Baby Bee has a sushi one. But look, we have a theme. I didn't even know. Cute, cute. I love hedgehogs. Do you know anyone who has a pet hedgehog? I've always wanted a pet hedgehog, but at the same time, I feel like I like animals that I can cuddle, and you can't really cuddle a hedgehog. I mean, you, you have to wear like gloves when you hold them because they can prickle you in your hands. So I don't know. I really would like one though. They're so cute and they curl up. I don't know. They're at least cute to look at. So I have three more things to show you and then I guess we will end this, but Queen Bee has been spinning this beautiful 100% non-superwash BFL and these are just the singles hopefully it's focusing for you guys this was our Hogwarts Order of Magical Makers Club a few months ago um, because for that club we do fiber and um, a yarn club this one is the Swedish short snout yes and oh my goodness, it is beautiful. I have a braid too that I am going to spin when I get some free time, probably after advents are done <laughs> being wound, but I just wanted to show this because she has been slowly working on it. She's been doing a ton of knitting and she's been getting through like an insane amount of projects, but this is just beautiful. And I kind of want to do a project with all four dragons together because we're going to have the fiber of all four dragons and I think that we're going to release them as a collection probably closer to Christmas time I would think if we do that because we need to wait several months after the club receives their yarn because that's like perks of being in the club um, and also if you ever wanted to check out that club um, just so you know, we do donate $3 from every club sale fiber and yarn to um, transequality.org. And also, the yarns are sometimes club exclusive. Like, there's always a chance we might release them, but there's also a chance we might not. There have been a ton of colors that we haven't released, like Niffler. Niffler was amazing. We have not released Niffler. Niffler was a difficult one to dye, so. Also, um, the invisibility cloak, like just cool stuff. And we have a Tour de Tolkien club where we do colorways based on the different destinations throughout Lord of the Rings series. Um, and yeah, so just fun stuff like that. And each club comes with at least a button, um, a little write up about the colorway and what inspired it. And, um, they oh 
what what else was I gonna say and yeah they're like exclusive colors a lot of times so yeah if you ever want to check that out definitely do that um but yes now I have socks to show you because Queen Bee has decided to become the Queen Sock Woman Bee at Bumble Baker's Farm because she has been cranking out socks like she knits like two socks a week almost and these are the sock a day sock pattern um this insane colorway and i think i've shown this before um is toxic rainbow and i absolutely love them but yes she finished them and she's keeping them for herself of course and this yarn is our squishy dk base which other than holding coquette sock two strands together i recommend using squishy dk for this pattern because both both of those yarns hold up incredibly well this one I think pills the least um coquette sock can sometimes pill a little bit when you're doing um the sock a day sock pattern just because it isn't quite as tightly knit as if you are knitting it just single in like you know a fingering white sock um but that's only sometimes I have pairs that have not pilled at all so I feel like it's almost like my own fault like I've done something to those socks but um those ones hold up incredibly well and these hold up incredibly well I have so many pairs of sock a day socks that I out of our squishy DK base that I swear like they look almost new other than them fading a little bit on the bottoms just because you know that's what happens when you wear socks eventually the bottoms start to wear but they are like not any thinner on the bottom they're just beautiful so queen bee is one lucky duck and we also have these ones that i showed last time um these are the rainbow dalmatian with that were kind of a mist dye they have way too many black speckles on them but that's that's fine they're still super cute and then the blue budgie also a mist dye heel and toe and goodness these are so cute like aren't these just so cheerful just imagine having rainbow socks I think we right now we still have some rainbows in the shop um I have 20 gram a rainbow spectrum of 20 gram minis on coquette sock which would make adorable sock a day socks like freaking adorable I think you would only need the set and you would be able to make for most foot sizes like the full like a, two full socks um doubled yeah to make sock a day socks or just singles for regular socks but I'm kind of thinking of doing that because I have a little bit of extras left over from winding so maybe I will do that but I think for rainbow rainbow colorways like this one and the rainbow dalmatian and toxic rainbow I think we have um cobalt calypso still in the shop with DK as an option but I think we might have sold out of everything else but rainbow colors will be coming back don't stress we always we always have try to have some rainbows in the shop because they are one of our very favorite things oh my goodness they're just so cute <sighs> well I think that's it um I don't even know how long this video went for but thank you so much for joining me um I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast um if you did again please give us a thumbs up um leave a comment let me know what you want to see in the future and also um subscribe definitely subscribe and thank you so much I'll see you again in two weeks and Take care. Bye.